I'm Anne-Marie Lynch in the Newswatch Newsroom. Coming up next, a Bohemian Bash in the West Valley. Jam on the corner of 5th and Wells where the carjacking took place this morning. The police just released a sketch of the suspect. They believe he's still in the area. The festival wraps up tomorrow night with a five-hour folk concert. I'm Amory Lynch in Studio City where the big question is, will the Oscars happen? That story coming up. Those stories and more on Newswatch. Good afternoon. I'm Amory Lynch in the Newswatch newsroom. It's just a matter of days now until the Oscar Awards, but if striking writers have their way, the show could suffer the same fate as the Golden Globes. I talked with writers who say if there's no contract soon, they'll shut down Hollywood's biggest night. We shall the whole damn world. This is union territory. This is the sound of angry writers as they continue in their standoff against the Hollywood producers. Outside of CBS today, the mood was uncertain as to how long the strike would last. With Hollywood's biggest night in question, writer Patty Carr stood firm. The expectation, I guess, would be that it would become a situation like the Golden Globes where there would not be an event, um, at least not the, the traditional event, if, if we don't have a contract by then. Writer Jack Amiel pickets proudly outside of CBS on a daily basis, finding the camaraderie of his fellow writers enjoyable. But he is fully aware of the economic and political ramifications of the strike. These are billionaires with multi-billion dollar corporations, and they will do what they want, when they want. When they want the strike to be over, it'll be over. But one thing the billionaire producers will not do is talk openly about the negotiations. They have called for a complete media blackout until the strikers walk off the picket lines. With writers and producers locked down at the tables, writers admit that they are cautiously optimistic. For Emil, these negotiations are not just for him, but for future generations of writers. Uh, we're doing it for the next bunch. We're the, the people who are in college now who say, I want to be a writer, and who are going to need a pension in 25, 30 years. Members of the Screen Actors Guild have already announced they won't cross the writers' picket lines if the strike isn't settled. In other news, legendary ladies of Hollywood shined bright in North Hollywood last night. They teamed up with the Smithsonian to make history. This was during a party scene. From Tippi Hedron to Florence Henderson, check out the legends of screen, television, and stage. They've come together to donate pieces of Hollywood history to America's greatest museum, the Smithsonian. Brady Bunch mom, Florence Henderson, is giving her Pop Culture Icon Award. Well, I received uh, the Pop Culture Award uh, for the Brady Bunch for playing Carol Brady. And uh, I was very excited about being on the cutting edge, you know. I could have received an award for the work I've done in the theater. But to still be, uh, you know, the pop culture icon, that's, that's pretty cool. Held at North Hollywood's El Portal Theater, the donation ceremony showcased scripts from Tippi Hedren, dresses from Carol Channing and Angela Lansbury, scrapbooks from Esther Williams, and an original Catwoman suit from Julie Newmar. The original, it was made of steel. Uh, and it used to make my fingers bleed. Selecting these ladies was an obvious choice to museum director Brent Glass. So tell me about the selection criteria for this exhibit. Well, we were interested in um, uh, working with some of the legendary uh, women uh, of stage and screen, and uh, we were very fortunate to uh, identify nine women who agreed to donate uh, some items to the Smithsonian that reflected their careers, and we're very thrilled with that. For movie fans, these aren't just props. This is history. For instance, where were you when you saw the birds? Were there any items that perhaps might have just been a little bit difficult for you to part with? Well, I think the bow was one, and uh, these shoes the, the, the brocaded shoes, I don't think they make them anymore. <laughs> Betsy Williams flew in from San Francisco to see her favorite Catwoman. Catwoman is it. I have a snow globe on my desk. She's just, she's everything. Julie Newmar is it. The items will go on display this summer. That's going to do it for this afternoon. Thank you for watching Newswatch. I'm Amory Lynch. You take care. It's called Topanga Days, and it's the biggest bohemian party west of the Mississippi. The Music and Food Festival draws nature lovers from around the country. They come to dance, eat, and share folk tales. More than 5,000 people are expected to attend. I don't think anywhere else in Southern California can you find such an eclectic mix of people, music, culture. The festival wraps up tomorrow night with a five-hour folk concert. From the Newswatch Newsroom, I'm Amory Lynch.